Reynolds. Driving it wide. Bat angle shot. Still free. Carlson scores. That's the beauty right there. That's the beauty of just a low shot, hard, handcuffs the goaltender, and then you got some, some beef just driving the far post hard, and he shovels it home. That's where Sam Carlson's going to earn his paycheck. They don't actually get paychecks at this level, but Sam Carlson is big, strong. We've seen him on that power play earlier, camping out in front of the net, refusing to go away. The defenders are just, he's so big, you can't, you can't stop him. He's going to Lobber, a little chip shot behind the net. Out to the line. Fricks the drive, scores! Tipped in front. The post show. The Flames unable to get it done on a power play, but shortly thereafter, Jacob Fricks with a shot from the point, knocked down in front, the deflection from Jordan Bochinski, the freshman, gives the Flames a 2-0 lead. Interesting choice from Grant Garvin to drop that puck back for Nelson. Breakaway, Thompson, in, backhander, scores! <laughs> My goodness, what a pass. Hits Thompson on the tape from the own defensive zone. Thompson goes in all alone. Nifty little move. kuzo has got nothing for him. Five hole. Oh. And I just look at the replay. It's a good thing he swallowed that pass, uh, that shot. Oh. They score. Prestamo, short side high. Screening the goaltender in front was Connor McNamara. And they capitalize on the power play to make this a 3-1 to one hockey game. Now that's the first goal the Liberty Flames have given up since September 23rd. That's nearly nine periods of hockey a goal. 178 minutes of shutout hockey for the Flames, broken by that power play goal right there. Big 33 seconds for Syracuse. They bring it inside the zone. This is Lambert. Stopping on the half wall, drops it back down low. Lambert sneaking in, throws it out in front. Hayward was covered. Cotto, his blast, a puck in front, they score! A broken play, it looked like the Flames were gonna be able to clear. Lauber, I believe, unable to get a piece of it, and slipping home the rebound was Matthew Jacobs. It looked as if Jaden Lauber just abandoned his post on the back end of that penalty kill. I mean, I think the Flames were set up in a diamond, which we talked about the odd man, you know, advantage that could be created down low. You see, yeah, there's Jaden Lauber running the diamond right there. Jacob Fricks is the man down low, unable to clean up in front. Rebound just comes out. Two on one down there. Jacob Fricks has to watch the back door. That's, you know, that's what we mentioned earlier with the weakness in the diamond system. He steps out onto the ice, now comes in front of Cole Burak. A shot by Prestamo, who's was trying to go short side high once again, unable to connect. Lambert with it. He's got fresh legs. High slot. Sending it deep, tipped in front. Burak! They score! What was Basil Reynolds doing? Matthew Jacobs with the goal, and it's a three. Well, you got to remember, they were, the killers were stuck out there for a long time. They didn't get a chance to change, and that was a, a pretty impressive power. That's not a power play we saw in the second period from them. Like, they're a different team in the third right now. Syracuse Lambert, is. Lambert just throws it towards the goal, and Basil Reynolds tries to knock it down. It slows down right in front for Jacobs to take two swipes at it and put it behind Cole Burak. Now we've got a tie game here. Yes. Okay. 56 seconds left on the four on three, and then there will be about 53 seconds of five on four for Syracuse. Cole Burak getting down. Didn't able to get it out. A shot scores! Hayward makes it four to three for Syracuse. Brett, that's a product of a goalie not trusting his defense. He had to come out and make the play. You've seen him make a play or two already like that. He gets out of his crease, can't reset, and he gets beat. That's totally a product of not being able to trust the guys in front of you. I talked a minute ago about the extra space that's on the ice in the four on three. Lots of other, lots of opportunity to spread out the D. See how low the Liberty defenders are? Lots of room for Hayward to make sure he gets a shot off that he likes. Puts it on the ice. Burak unable to get back in position as Adam mentioned a moment ago. Corcoran fires it down the length of the ice. 14 seconds left, Nelson's gonna have to hurry. 
sends it up the board. Stopped by Thompson. Seven seconds remain. Flames can't get it in. And Syracuse walks into the LaHaye Ice Center and wins the game 5-3. to three. That... A huge win. Their first road game in the ESCHL, and they walk into the LaHaye and have a fantastic third period. I am stunned by their third period. I hate to say I told you so. That was a big third period, Adam. Yeah, I hate to say it. I, you know, just looking at the stats, you know how much of a numbers guy I am, Rhett. They showed it. They've showed it. They score in the third period, and Liberty just didn't do enough of those shots. It was the quantity was there, but the quality was not there. Next time we'll have you talk about Liberty's third period and how great it is. <laughs> Take a look here at some of the work done by Syracuse here in this hockey game. As the both sides going through, shaking hands with tradition here in the ACHA. That shot short side, that was their first goal of the game in this one. Early on in the third period, it looked like a broken play, and then nice work in front by Matthew Jacobs. He actually had two goals on the day. And once again, Syracuse wins 5-3. to three. We'll be back in just a moment.